Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Right, ladies and gentlemen, um, a very good evening to you and welcome to this meeting of the Planning Policy Committee um, held virtually um, on Monday the 21st of September 2020. And welcome to you all, um, especially um, welcome to our public speaker um, who is um, here and ready to, ready to um, speak to us. Um, Mr. Bill Oddy, um, and good evening, Mr. Oddy. Are you unmuted and can you uh, hear us all? Indeed, I'm unmuted. Um, yes, good, good evening. My name's, uh, can I start? Okay, well, just, just uh, if, certainly you can start, but just before you do, um, first of all, welcome to the meeting. And secondly, um, we're very interested to hear what you have to say. Um, you have three minutes and um, please, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Hi there. Good evening. My name's Will Oddy and I'm a Senior Development Manager at the Crown Estate. We are the landowner and promoter of the site at Russian Lakes West. Following June's policy committee where Russian Lakes West continued to be recommended as the council's preferred site, we have been engaging with your officers and their specialist advisors ACOM as well as Natural England and the Wildlife Trust with regard to the additional ecological assessment work required. We've made significant progress and note that further to the issue of our supplementary ecological evidence, ACOM have stated in the committee report that the recreational pressure issues on the SBA are likely to be resolvable and that there is no reason to conclude that this site can constitute functionally linked land. Our separate discussions with the Wildlife Trust has led to a similar view. The feedback we've received from Natural England has also acknowledged that the site does not appear to be functionally linked at present. Notwithstanding this progress, we, we do recognise there is still further work to be done with Natural England and given the time pressures associated with the local plan process, understand why officers have taken the decision to in investigate alternative sites. However, we do not consider that the committee report recommendation reflects the evidence prepared to inform it. Appendix 1 of the committee report continues to identify our site as the preferred option with a concluding recommendation stating <laughs> Russian Lakes West remains the council's preferred option. If objections from Natural England and the Wildlife Trust could be satisfactorily overcome, this would reduce the required capacity for potential sites to the southeast of Rushton. If development at Russian Lakes West could be satisfactorily mitigated, then it could be supported by smaller scale infilling within the Growth Town area. We therefore consider it be premature to proceed with recommendation 14.1 part one which is to approve the site at Newton Road as an alternative site in place of Russian Lakes for two reasons. Firstly, a six week public consultation on the Newton Road proposals has not yet been undertaken and the outcome of this consultation is not yet known. Until that time, the council cannot know whether the Newton Road is an appropriate alternative to Russian Lakes. Secondly, there is still time whilst this further consultation is being undertaken for us to resolve the outstanding points in Natural England. Enabling us to continue to engage with Natural England during the proposed public consultation will have no impact on the local plan timescales. From a risk perspective, however, it means the council is maximising their potential options for additional housing sites ahead of the next policy committee. In the event that Rushton Lakes West was replaced at this stage and the Newton site receives material objections following consultation, then the council could end up with no potential additional housing sites and therefore would be a significant impact on the local plan part two programme. In addition, there are existing precedents with other local authorities and local plans where more than one site can be brought forward. That's so therefore, there is no... Sorry, okay. can you if, you could, if, you, if you can wind up, please. With, with yeah, yeah we'll do. Yeah, so what I was saying was, in addition, there, there are no procedural um, um, impediments to progressing with both sites. We would therefore respectfully request that members consider an alternative approach to recommendations one and two of paragraph 14.1 and we would propose um, amended wording as follows. One, approve the site on the land to the, land to the south of Newton Road, Rushton as an alternative viable site 
to be taken forward at this stage in parallel with the potential site at Russian Lakes West. And finally, to agree and undertake a six week public consultation period on the proposal to the allocated land to the south of Newton Road, Russian, to meet the strategic requirements for future housing provision if concerns raised by Natural England in relation to Russian Lakes West are not capable of being addressed. Um, thank you for your time and I'm very sorry for, for, for slightly overrunning. No, not at all. Um, I, I did want you to finish what you had to say. Um, so, you know, not, not, not a problem. Thank you very much. Um, OK, so thank you, Mr. Roddy. Um, we now move to the agenda of tonight's meeting and the agenda item one. Uh, apologies for absence, please. Thank you, Jim. I've received no apologies for absence this evening. OK, thank you. I understand that Councillor Lewis. Oh, Councillor Lewis has made it. Welcome, Councillor Lewis. Um, I, uh, I, he was knocking yes, off. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for some unknown reason, it would just took an enormous amount of time to click in, and then I ended up with being at the meeting twice. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice to see so I've, now, I've now switched one off and off. I don't know why I came in through the normal link, I came in through the calendar. But it wouldn't go, it just kept showing me the dots. Anyway, apologies for that delay, Mr. Chairman. Not at all and welcome. Uh, right, agenda item two um, are the minutes of the meeting which was held on the 8th of June. Um, may I um, confirm these as a true record of that meeting? No, Chair. Thank you. Who was that? Uh, Councillor North. Councillor North, thank you. And a seconder, please. Thank you, Absolutely. Councillor Mercer, Councillor Lewis. Does there anybody want to speak on the accuracy of the minutes? OK, all those in favour? You can speak verbally if you're not, if you if you wish. Are there any Aye. against? Aye. 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 Any against? And any abstentions? Thank you. Minutes are carried. Um, Agenda item three to receive any declarations of interest. Have we received any? None received by me, Chairman, unless anyone has anything to say. Right. Does anybody have anything to say as a declaration of interest? Thank you. And now we move to agenda item four questions by members under Council Procedure Rule 10.3. And I believe that we do have. Yes, Chairman, Councillor Dorothy Maxwell has submitted a number of questions. Thank you. Um, right, I'm just trying to um, open my other computer so that I can see it. Um, would you... Um, right, um, right, Charlie, have you got the list of questions in front of you? Yes. Great. Um, I'm just having a little bit of a job for some reason getting into my other computer, which is where I had had it all ready to roll. Um, could you read the first question and response out, please? The first question submitted was, would it be possible for all housing to have a chain charging point for electric vehicles? The officer response to that question was advances in technology are leading to electrically powered cars becoming more popular and the council takes a position, positive position of encouraging the uptake of these vehicles. This is supported by the Northamptonshire Parking Standards document September 2016, which states that the provision of electric vehicle charging points on blocks and in communal parking areas will be supported and often form part of the travel planning initiatives to improve air quality. Electric vehicle charging points that are to be located within the highway will require discussion with the highway authority to, to identify specific requirements, licenses and costs. It goes on to say at a, at a strategic level, the Joint Planning Committee has agreed the need to revise the approach to providing local design guidance using a future supplementary planning document as a platform for creating more locally specific guidance across the new Unitary Council. A suite of F SPDs including local design guidance will be therefore be produced to address key topics in greater detail. Finally, the government is currently considering altering building regulations for new residential buildings to include requirements for electric vehicle charge points following consultation undertaken last year. Did you want me to continue with the rest, Chairman, or did you want to um, take no, over? I've, I've got it up now. That, that's fine. Um, right, your question one. Councillor Maxwell, have you got any comments on that? 
Yes, I just really want to say that we're running out of time regarding 2021. And if we had this policy in place, that meant that every new house built in East North Hants would have to have an electric charging point for electric vehicles. And I just think with climate change, I just think it's a way forward. And if we had this policy in place, then it would mean that all builders would have to put, put it in. OK, thank you. Yep. Um, right, question two. To encourage healthy lifestyles, could estates of more than 30 houses have a green space for children with a play area of two swings, seats for parents and an area for ball games? The, the answer is draft local plan policy EN10 provides further direction for considering an enhancement of open space provision. This looks at all new residential developments of 10 or more dwellings being required to contribute to the enhancement and provision of open space to meet the needs of the population arising from such developments. Whilst the policy supports the principle behind the question, the wording in the question is too specific to agree as requested. However, the emerging open space standards in the local plan indicate that they would, in most circumstances, provide opportunity within the level of provision requested by your question. Councillor Maxwell, any comments? Yes, what I'd like to say was that two weeks ago, a planning application for 84 houses in Earthlinborough was passed and all it had was two swings no seats and no play area and I just think 84 houses that is not that's not enough space as a green area for children given that we've got to encourage them to have healthy lifestyles so therefore what I'm asking is that we take it more seriously and consider making sure that these developments or these developers uh, actually build a, a really substantial area so that children in, because this place is off the beaten track, this uh, 84 houses, that they should have uh, a bigger area to play in. OK, um, it will be, uh, that will obviously be considered. Thank you. Um, question three, um, can we have a policy that no tandem parking on all new estates as part of planning applications? The answer is the council adopted a householder extension supplementary planning document, which in, at the last planning policy meeting on the 8th of June. This document sets out the council's stance in respect of tandem parking at paragraph 4.4 as follows. In addition, if an extension results in the number of bedrooms increasing at a property, it needs to be ensured that adequate provision is made to comply with the standards set out in paragraph 4.2 above. In most circumstances, the aim will be for parking places to be side by side for easy access. Tandem parking should only be allowed if it is the only option and the alternative will be on street parking in a location where it is likely to be problematic. It should also be restricted to two vehicles deep. There should not be reliance placed upon nearby public car parks to meet a shortfall in provision of property. This is because they are not guaranteed to be available 24 place hours a day. Whilst this relates to existing development, it sets out the council's general approach to tandem parking. In addition, the design guidance referred to in the response in question one is likely to provide some further guidance for consideration. Whilst the ideal is side by side parking, where this is not possible, having two spaces in tandem alongside a house is better than no provision at all or only one space. Councillor Maxwell would like to, like to comment. Uh, yes, please. What I'd like to say is in recent planning applications which have come forward recently, you know, we're, se we're seriously not taking this into consideration. The developers think they can get away with it and the road systems are that they're too narrow. Therefore, with parking, uh, you then got problems with people trying to, to overtake or get down the road. If we don't make a specific request that where at all possible there is no tandem parking, then this, this situation over parking in housing estates will get worse and the and equally it become contentious. So okay. I really think it's just quite serious. OK, thank yeah. you, Councillor. Uh, it was, of course, we did in fact pass a policy on this very matter at the last meeting um, and it does not approve of tandem parking. Um, anyway, thank you, Councillor. Um, and obviously that too will be considered um, as well. That's so, right, Chairman. Yes. May I make a brief comment on that last yes, remark? Yes, you may, Councillor Boto. At the last meeting that uh, the Chair refers to, 
there was some discussion on tandem parking. And I think the consensus was, uh, whilst it was preferable not to have tandem parking, in many cases, however, if you did not allow that, you'd have more street parking. Exactly. The extra car is stuck on the road. So I disagree entirely with Councillor Maxwell's comment. It would make part of the street situation better or worse uh, by having tandem parking. In my view, tandem parking, parking when it's absolutely necessary, alleviates the street scene and does allow for freer flow of traffic. So I really think we hammered that at the last meeting. And I think the position we took then was a sensible one and we should maintain that position. Thank okay. You. Right. Thank you, Councillor. Um, and thank you, Councillor Maxwell. Good. Um, OK, now, ladies and gentlemen, we move to the substantive part of the agenda. Um, agenda item five, um, which is East Northamptonshire Local Plan Part Two, um, consultation on an alternative viable site allocation and the Rushton East SUE policy. Um, now, um, is it, um, it? It is, in fact, Richard, who's going to take us through this paper. And um, good evening, Richard, and away you go. Good evening, Chair. Thank you. Good evening, councillors. Um, I wanted to take you through the salient points of the, the report on agenda item five. Um, you recall the, the background to this was a uh, public consultation which was undertaken in February, March uh, of, of this year. Um, that report focused on, on uh, the uh, proposal for a uh, site of around 450 dwellings at Rushton Lakes West. Um, in addition to that, um, th there has been further feedback which we've fed to councillors at the previous committee. Um, so in terms of where we, we are at the moment, um, the report itself here tonight focus on the out outcomes and the implications of that additional work that was agreed at the last meeting. Um, it also introduces the implications for a policy and supporting tax for Rushton uh, East Sustainable Urban ex Extension within the, the local plan, which I'll come on to later in the, the report. So that's the background to the, the report. Um, just to fill you in with a little bit more detail, um, the if you follow through on the, the report with me, the summary of the objection from Natural England that was received as part of the consultation in February, March is probably the key to the first part of this report. That objection is summarised by the five bullet points in paragraph 1.5 from Natural England, which we've, we've considered before and hopefully members are reasonably um, up to speed with. This report, however, deals with the further assessment work, amongst other things that's been done on the back of that representation. Indeed, further work has been undertaken both with Natural England, with the promoters of um, Rushton Lakes West, and also by staff within the, the policy team in terms of looking at um, viable alternatives as part of the work that was agreed at that committee. That work was restricted to the growth town of Rushton, as, as you're aware. Um, in terms of the further assessment work and the, and the associated evidence with that, this is section two of the report. Um, there were alternative viable um, sites that were considered. It, I would just say at the last, at the last time this was considered at the previous meeting, and going back even before the consultation, we were looking at broad areas of search, whereas this latest piece of work reflects more site specific areas. So there is a, you know, a difference between the, the further follow up assessment work. It is more precise. Um, and the following actions have been undertaken since the June committee then. Further assessments to consider the potential for alternative viable proposals. Um, and those alternative proposals I'll come on to in a moment. There are a number of specific sites that have been proposed. The closer working with the promoters of Rushton Lakes West and the, um, the objection from Natural England to look at explore the potential for mitigation measures, which again I'll come on to. What you have at 2.3 in the report are the key issues, I think, in terms of what, what's come out of that work or what was investigated as part of that work. So you sorry, four issues in that particular paragraph 2.3. The first one is whether um, Rushton Lakes West and indeed alternative sites are 
comprised of what we know as functionally linked land. Now that what that means is that that has a potential to serve as a supporting land for the bird populations for the SBA, the special protection area and how that functions. The second issue that was raised was about the, the uh, recreational impacts on the site, which is the SPA, of course. The third one is about the proximity, particularly in relation to Rush Rushton Lakes West to the site and the potential urbanisation of the SPA. And the final issue raised by Natural England was um, alternative viable site proposals and, and whether there are any that can be brought forward and considered. So those were, the, if you like, the key sort of focus of the, of the work that we're bringing to you tonight. What I would say at this point is we've also got the Council's um, ecological consultant from ACOM um, as, as part of the meeting online tonight and James Riley will be available for questions that members may have in relation to the appropriate assessment work and the habitats regulation. Um, James is providing that uh, piece of work for us. Um, which is it's not quite concluded yet, but has been featured in the report quite heavily towards the back end of the report, which you, does reach a conclusion. And as I say, James will be available for questions as we progress. Um, in terms of the functionally linked land, uh, in summary, Natural England has accepted that the proximity of Russian Lakes West to the SPA does not necessarily mean that the site is functionally linked land. Um, but that, that is, is still to be finalised. There has been a report that's produced, which again, um, James Riley from ACOM has commented on in terms of the implications of that. So good progress is made in that respect. Um, there is also the potential that some of the alternative sites could be seen as functionally linked land, but again, work is progressing on those and the opportunity for mitigation, mitigation measures in respect of those sites is also being considered. We turn the page on the on the report page 10 and the next issue is the recreational impacts now again a lot of work has been done in relation to that um, there are mitigation measures which can be taken into account um, a number of those are still progressing so there's still some question marks over over achieving that but again the potential is there to to, to look at the uh, opportunity if you like to to resolve some of those issues i suppose in relation to rushton lakes west that helps uh, in respect of the, the ownership of the land which would be able to bring in water features and close off footpaths etc to reduce the disturbance on the spa however there are some quite clear implications of the um, recreational pressures one of the key implications, I think, is the the sustainable the uh, size of the alternative natural green space that, that is required. And if you remember from Russian East proposal, those of you involved in that, that certainly there was a significant sang, as we call them, proposed for Russian East to allow that to be brought forward. Mm -hmm. Here again, there are similar proposals regarding sangs. Um, at the moment, I think the Russian Lakes West proposal provides a six hectare sang. Um, however, Natural England are looking at a 10 hectare sign, so there's some work still to be done in that respect. In summary, I think the big issue here is that the proposal that we looked at and consulted upon in February, March is no longer possible to bring forward because the, the land north of what, what's the link road that comes across the middle of the site, any development north of that link road um, effectively is ruled out by the proposals or the objection from Natural England that's being um, worked upon by the promoters of Rushton Lakes West and there is a sort of revised scheme if you like that deals with development on the southern side of that link road. That does reduce the amount of development that Rushton Lakes West could produce. Um, promoters proposed that it could um, release around 350 dwellings but again we, we'll have to look into the detail of that in terms of uh, the absolute number that it can produce, it could be less than that, it could be around that, that that's still to be understood. So I suppose what I would say in, in relation to this is that again good progress has been made in this respect, however the proposal um, it is very much changed from that which you originally were aware of back in February and March. So we move on to the alternative sites um, that work has been ongoing within and that's down at section 2.3 
the report. The council has undertaken assessment of alternative sites that may be suitable for meeting the um, joint cost strategy housing requirements. This is the short form requirements of around 450 dwellings. And it's looked at the following options, and those are at the top of page 11 of your report. Effectively, these are land southeast of Rushton, land south of Newton Road, which would be a linear infill, and land east of Rushton and Hyam Ferris, which is commonly known as Slater's Lodge. Officers have given careful consideration to, to each of these areas of land, and those are sort of set out quite clearly in Appendix 1 to your report. The preference of the alternative sites would be for the, what we call the southern option, which was site three, land to the south of Newton Road, which is very much the, to the south and accesses the, the southern roundabout along the A6. We have liaised with a number of stakeholders in terms of the work that's being done, including Natural England, to understand constraints and opportunities that each of these sites present. Um, importantly, in 2.16, Natural England has welcomed the Council's approach to assessing the alternative sites, and you'll see in there that there is a statement from Natural England in respect to the site. They've welcomed the alternative um, site proposals and identify that although they present some risk of recreational disturbance to the SPA, they have the potential to be situated also on functionally linked land, as I mentioned a few moments ago, but they do regard them as more suitable sites than those that sit very closely to the SPA. OK, so the Natural England objection to Rushton Lakes West uh, proposal, as I mentioned, is a significant material consideration. Um, however, this is paragraph 2.18, which is probably a key paragraph of the report. If a satisfactory alternative site to Rushton Lakes West can be identified, it says it can be, should be taken forward unless Natural England can be satisfied that the comprehensive mitigation measures and concerns raised in their representations about Rushton Lakes West can be satisfactorily addressed. Now we've taken some additional legal advice in, in, in respect of an addendum, which we will come back to, but effectively, I think the summary of that is that uh, this is what's called a precautionary principle, and I think James Riley may wish to add something on this later on. But what it, it, it doesn't mean that, uh, what it means rather is that Rushton Lakes, in respect of Rushton Lakes West, the precautionary principle does not require the council can only select that site if there are no other available alternative sites. So it could still um, select Rushton Lakes West. However, obviously in terms of the implications from the HRA regulations, we need to sort of look at the mitigation measures and understand whether they can be overcome. That's still an issue. So in some respects that, that addendum doesn't really change things. It just makes the, uh, um, the legal position clear. Um, I then come on to the appropriate assessment work, which I will not go into in detail, that there's quite a lot of uh, information in there, which again, James can pick up with you if you've got any questions on that. Uh, it reaches a conclusion on page 13 of the, the report in relation to a number of issues, such as the functionally linked land, the recreational input, uh, impact rather, and um, so, some other issues, most of which I've just summarised within the last few moments. Mm. Um, okay, in terms of the current position, um, additional work that's been undertaken, um, as I say, has has moved moved forward further information. But at this point in time, we're not in a position that 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 information has provided sufficient clarity to understand whether or, or if at all that the, the objection from Natural England could be removed. Um, the issues are complex and the time scale that may relate to removal of, of that objection um, is not likely to be forthcoming um, within a short time scale. And I think in, in terms of the current position, what this report does is to consider the implications on the time scale of the local plan. And whilst it's not a, a, a sort of the only driving factor here, obviously sensible planning is another and the right outcome is, is a consideration. At the same time, clearly there are implications for councils in terms of moving the plans forward and getting those adopted. 
we, we would all like to obviously see a plan in place as quickly as possible, but it has to be the right plan. And as councillors, you have to weigh up the issues in terms of the implications on both timescale and decision making as we move forward. There is a summary in terms of key issues on page 15. I won't go into detail because that will take a little bit too long to, to go through each of those, but I think those four questions are key to the, to the report. Um, very briefly, they relate back to the functionally linked land, they relate back to the recreational impacts and the urbanisation of the SPA um, and, and look at the alternative sites. So again, that, that's a bit more repetition of what, what I've spoken about, but that very quickly summarises the position. Just before we go back onto the, the implications for time scale, there's also another part to this local plan, and that is the, the Rushton East SUE. Legal advice that's been sought from um, for by the council um, in relation to the master plan, master plan framework document, which was also subject to consultation in February, March of this year, um, has, has stated that the, the most preferable way forward would be to include the uh, Russian East within the local plan, which is something we've done to an extent anyway. There is a draft um, supporting policy, not supporting text rather, within the, the draft plan that was written back at the end of 2018, early 2019. But I think that the change really in terms of the designation of the boundaries of the SUE is important because that can really only be done by development plan document rather than a framework document. So I think what we're looking for here is um, a policy that sets out the boundaries of the SUE, provides some headline process and direction for the SUE, which almost forms a bridge, if you like, between the strategic policy and the joint core strategy and that lying within the master plan framework itself. So that that would that would go out to consultation and give you all an opportunity to, to comment further on that um, during that six week consultation period. But that I must stress that is required in terms of the designation of that site. OK. Um, So options for taking the local plan forward, uh, given given what I've summarised so far, I think there are three main issues to consider, and these are set out in paragraph 4.1 of your report. Firstly, to acknowledge that the level of evidence required to support promotion of land at Rushton Lakes West would require the local plan part two timetable to be further extended. Secondly, to acknowledge that alternative viable sites have been assessed around the growth town of Rushton, and that a land has been identified to the south of Newton Road uh, as the preferred as a preferred option of the viable alternative viable sites, which could provide an opportunity to meet the housing numbers. And thirdly, to recognise that a new policy on the Rushton East Zoo within the local plan part two would give weight to the framework document in guiding the planning and implementation of that zoo beyond the local plan. Um, is somebody, somebody, I can hear some background. Yeah, yeah, there's somebody talking. Could they? Could everybody make sure their microphones are muted, please? Thank you, David. Um, the the report then goes on to consider the implications of each of those um, issues, which I, again I don't want to go into. It would take up too much time with the committee, but clearly there may be questions in terms of the, the implications of those issues. Importantly, I think in terms of the next steps, in light of the, the, the content of the report, um, officers recommend that consultation should be taken should take place on an alternative viable site to ensure that a robust part two local plan is submitted in a timely manner for examination. That would require a six week public consultation, um, which uh, the aim would be to report back to the PPC meeting um, sometime in December. That would allow the opportunity to take on board some of the issues that currently are outstanding in relation to the mitigation proposals, but also to understand the potential for alternative viable sites, or in this case, the preferred option land south of Newton Road. Whilst council is not required by law to undertake additional consultation, it could progress straight to pre-submission in the autumn as we'd previously looked at, but that does lend itself to some element of risk and that the plan itself could be found unsound at examination if these issues aren't resolved before we go to examination or indeed submit the plan. 
the aim of the time, the aim of the plan really um, is to, as I say, certainly to get this plan submitted by the end of the lifetime of this council. And the the time the time scale for doing that is set out very clearly at the bottom of page 17, which is power of 4.9 of your report. Effectively, um, a six week consultation would be reported back before Christmas to this committee and the aim would then to be progressed to submission in January so that the plan was submitted to the planning ex inspectorate for examination before uh, the middle of March and effectively the PERDA for the, the elections would, would come into play. That would probably be where we were at if we went straight to pre-submission in the autumn. But however, if we went pre submission in the autumn, there are risks, strong risks, as I said, attached to that. Secondly, the examination would probably be slightly nearer than it would if we submitted in, in March. Um, I, I'm anticipating that an examination would take place probably summer to late summer if we submitted in March. But you would have a, you would have the council's plan as a submitted plan. Yeah. So moving on to the recommendations of the report, there are five elements to the recommendation that the committee are recommended to, to make. And there are chair, um, I'll probably pass on to yourself, but I can come back on these if you like. There are um, changes to, or minor changes to the first um, recommendation and further recommend changes to the second recommendation of the report. I can take you through those if you'd like, otherwise I'd leave those to you, Chair. Uh, no, well, I, I, I think if you... Sorry. No, it's, it's self echoing. <laughs> OK, um, I think, Richard, if you could go through each recommendation in detail um, okay. with the proposed wording, um, ladies yep. and gentlemen, there are, as um, Mr. Palmer's suggested, there are some 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 slight changes um, which ha which take into account recent representations and take into account um, some of the some of the work that we've had to do to make sure that the um, problem with the new with with Russian Lakes West is taken into consideration. The emerging um, site in Newton Road um, is duly consulted upon and considered and the local plan um, is still able to be submitted um, in the spring. So if we can go through each of the five recommendations, some of them will not change, but some of them might. Um, it would be, I think, helpful. OK, thank you, Chair. So the recommendation then, members of the committee, is as follows. The committee is recommended to um, um, criteria one, then I'll call it, or recommendation one. There is a small change in here. So it's approve the site on land to the south of Newton Road, Rushton, as an alternative viable site. And then the words in parallel with rather than in place of yeah. is the change there. So, and that is obviously because Rushton Lakes West still has some um, potential viability, um, it, it maybe as a reduced site, but we do not want to exclude it. Um, so, and uh, as uh, as um, our public speaker, Mr. Roddy, pointed out, you know, they they are still um, working themselves as the Crown Estates with with Natural England on this. So we want to develop. The consultation on the Newton Road site in parallel with the um, Rushton Lakes West um, site, which we previously uh, identified as the uh, as a preferred option um, for by this committee. Thank you, Richard. OK, thank you. Um, recommendation two is a bit, a bit more. There is a bit more change to that, and I, what I will do for that one is to read the um, proposed reworded recommendation. So, so delete what's in the, the, the report at the moment and replace with the following. The committee is recommended to, to acknowledge that the objection raised by Natural England remains unresolved. Therefore, a six week public consultation period be undertaken 
on the most preferable viable alternative site proposal. Mr Chair, yes. can we have that a little bit slower, please? Yeah, I was conscious of that. I mean, it will be available for, for um, you know, for, for consumption after the meeting, but I'll read it through again afterwards, David. Let me just reread the first bit again for you then. Acknowledge that the objection raised by Natural England remains unresolved. Therefore, a six week public consultation period be undertaken on the most preferable viable alternative site proposal and that's been identified as land to the south of Newton Road Rushton. Okay and that the outcome of this consultation be reported back to PPC in December to allow the progress of the local plan in line with the time scale set out in paragraph 4.10 of this report. The remainder of the um, proposals um, are unchanged. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you Mr. very much, Chairman, Richard. Mr Chairman, I'd like to amend um, recommendation five as well, please. Uh, OK, well, while we're just doing the amendment, yeah, OK, what, what, what um, delegate the detailed wording? Oh, yes. What would you like to say, sir? I'd like like also to uh, delegate to the uh, chairman of the Russian East Working Party included in this. OK. Um, right, well, ladies and gentlemen, first, first of all, thank you, Richard, for that very comprehensive um, brief and very comprehensive presentation. Um, we'll come back to the recommendations a little later, um, but at the moment um, I have Councillor Jill Mercer then I understand that Councillor Jenny might have sent a comment to another meeting, so I don't know whether yes. you wanted to speak. You did? did it, was to, it was to ask you to make sure that we got that recommendation changed. Ah, no, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> okay, thank you. But so it's in Council policy and resources chat. <laughs> oh, well, that, excellent. I mean, it's, it's, good to, it's good to travel. Anyway. Yeah, you, uh, sorry, point of order, but you did acknowledge me first, not to be rude to Councillor Mercer, but you did acknowledge me first. Um, yes, sir. Um, I thought you wanted to speak at the conclusion of the discussion. Uh, the did you not? You're on mute, Councillor. Yes, uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it was the conclusion of the uh, presentation. My misword. Oh, right. I do apologize. Ah, in that case, if uh, thank you. I, I, what, I was um, deliberately. Uh, um, I was not deliberately throwing you to the wolves, uh, Councillor North. Um, but anyway, yes. If you'd like to open the debate, um, the floor's yours, sir. Thank you. And I note what I said, Chairman, in the chat. It was, was on conclusion. So I do apologise on that particular point. And apologies, Councillor Mercer, as well on that particular point. And uh, and thank you, Chair. Um, firstly, before it gets lost in the, in the whole debate, which I'm sure will be uh, about uh, Russian West, I do welcome free, Chair, in relation to adding the um, option to incorporate the master plan framework for um, for Russian East Sustainable Extension into the local plan part two. I think that will give that serious extra weight. And I think that is something we've discussed before over the years when we've taken it to council about making it a national master plan and SPD and including it. So that's that's a passing comment, but I very much welcome that inclusion chair and that and that legal advice. Um, but I'm obviously, obviously want to speak about the substantive item. Uh, Firstly, I do welcome the changes to the recommendation. Um, I wasn't going to speak as long as uh, Mr Palmer, but I wasn't going to be far off, but I can mm -hmm. I can thankfully cut all that quite considerably a lot shorter now. Um, I certainly thank um, the officers for what is a really, really comprehensive and well done and uh, well identified uh, report chairman and identifying, identifying all the issues. I think from my point of view, one of the main concerns right from the off with this um, with Natural England was the functionally linked land. Um, mm. I've got to know more about golden plovers and lap wings than I probably care to, yeah. um, but I am. And, uh, and obviously that they are very important in relation to the SPA and, and obviously those sites. But I think as the report is clear, Chair, that uh, you know, with the conclusion from ACOM that it does actually say um, 
the term from experts as well, because I'm not going to read. Uh, I'll say bird experts rather than get lost on that interpretation. But there is no reason to conclude that this site constitutes significant functionally linked land. I'm reading from the conclusion on page 13. So that's a major hurdle chair that I think has has been overcome in relation to in relation to that. But um, obviously within the report, there are still um, substantive objections to natural England. And I think obviously a lot of that as per in the report is the uh, recreational pressure close to the SPA. Um, but again, Chairman, I think uh, quite clearly in the report, given the time, and again, I'd quote from the uh, from the conclusion of the report, which I appreciate everybody's got in front of them, but the public may not have. Um, it does say on page 13, the head of their conclusion, um, based on detailed information submitted to by the site promoter and ACON's professional judgment, that recreational pressure issued on the SPA are likely ultimately to be resolved, particularly due to the proposed measures to control the access to the SPA. And I appreciate, Chairman, you would know all the measures that are included on page, I think, page 12 of obviously what can be done to mitigate the recreational pressure caused by people being obviously close to that site. Um, in relation to, you know, all the things you have in relation to houses, whether it's cats, you know, animals or people movement and so forth. And I think as it says in that report, Chair, that it's very clear that those mitigations, given the time, could be overcome, which should resolve the Natural England um, objections. But as you know, Chair, that is a holding objection and we can't really go into an examination with a holding objection from a government agency, a statutory government agency of, of Natural England. So it's absolutely right, Chair, that one of the key aims of this council, as you know and fully support, is to actually get a local plan at least sent off. Obviously, we can't have it concluded and, and reported back now by the end of the lifetime of this council. Um, but I think, um, you know, we can we do need to at least get it off to the inspector as detailed in the revised um, in the revised timelines. So I think in conclusion for my opening remarks, Chairman, I very much alter recommend uh, support the altered alternate recommendation in 14.1 because we don't know if there's going to be functionally linked and issues with any of the other alternative sites that we've uh, we've come across and I think that leaves our options open but at the end of the day you know this council should be determined to get a local plan submitted with the inspector at the turn of the new year and I think what this paper does tonight and the, the alternate uh, recommendation in 14.1, subject to everybody's agreement, actually does deliver that. Um, so it's not closing the drawbridge at the moment, it's leaving the options open. But at the end of the day, Chairman, we do need to get this local plan submitted. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor. I completely associate myself with your remarks on that because um, we've been working on it for so long. And and we want to get a local plan submitted and we want to get a sound local plan submitted. So it is important that we use the six week consultation period for the Newton Road site to keep the options open with Newton Road. So yes, indeed. Um, OK, I have got um, council. Uh, uh, my apologies, um, Councillor Mercer, for calling yeah, you and then, I, then not. But I think you understood the uh, the, the dialogue. And so uh, Councillor Council Mercer, please. Yeah, I, I had also interpreted that that uh, uh, Councillor wanted to speak at the end, so you, you weren't wrong. Um, right, um, I, I agree wholeheartedly with the sentiment of all that's been said um, in, and the change to the um, proposal. Um, I'm rather disappointed that that wording wasn't sent to us. We've had so many emails today, um, backwards and forwards on various things, but we haven't had this wording sent to us. Now, I had read through, for instance, what the Crown Estates had suggested, and I thought when you did the first uh, bullet point, you were going to say their wording on the second one, but you didn't. Now, in that wording, I think it's just missing something because it just says, acknowledge the objections raised by uh, Natural England remains unresolved, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't say which objections and on what. I, I would have thought we needed to put somewhere there the objections to the Russian Lakes West site. OK, that's just a technicality, um, but I think it just clarifies it. That's all. Um, I, I would like to point out that everywhere that we've been saying south of Newton Road. Yes. Um, according to my page 30, 57 of 136 in the assessments, this is land west of John White Golf Club, Bedford Road. 
So people keep saying Newton Road, and they keep, and it's in the resolution that it's Newton Road, uh, Newton Road, but it's not Newton Road. The other two sites for Newton Road, and this one is Bedford Road. So we really must make sure that we get that technica technically right. So now I'm just come down to sort of niggly points because that's sort of I agree with the sentiment and all the other uh, things that uh, Councillor North has said. Um, it is that, that level of detail. OK, now, for instance, in two places in the assessments in site one and two, it says that it's near Manor Park and there may be some leakage of um, uh, from the uh, site there, the uh, infield, sorry, the uh, landfill site. But they are a mile up the road, whereas the, the one that we're actually talking about doesn't say that and that one is next to it. So you, it, it's it's incorrect, in fact, OK? Yeah. Um, it also in one place says that this site that we're thinking of as the alternative, as what's been proposed the alternative, is um, C on the urban structures, but it actually was it was E, it was downgraded. So I think we need to, when you're looking at it, when you're doing the consultation, you need to take that into account just in case the JPU had thrown up something that was a problem. And it obviously um, keeping all, all our, not putting all our eggs in one basket with the two different ones uh, does just help us uh, make sure that we um, haven't lost, thrown the baby out with the bathwater sort of thing. Um, but there were, several other sites and since uh, Councillor Power is not here there were several other sites mentioned as possibles uh, the further the, the earlier round and a couple I know he sent a report out saying that he felt that some of the reasons why uh, some of the land on Crow Hill uh, saying that it wasn't accessible because it was across the A6 which has a, a crossing um, compared to for instance Rushton East is actually you know quite a good connectivity. So I, I think we need to just bear some of those other sites in mind, may not need to come up at this moment, but they might, you know, they shouldn't necessarily be discounted uh, out of uh, out of court. It, if the government's rules change, we may have to find all of these sites. So, you know, we may have to double the number of sites we put in. So um, the other thing was, um, as I said, a couple of the designations, um, it said that the southern one was E and it was actually C and the northern one, it says C and it's not E. So I just wonder if they got the two mixed up there. Um, the other thing is that presumably when taking this into account, they've taken into account that this land or sorry, the land next to it is proposed for a sports hub because they've actually downgraded the number of um, uh, problems with nearby sports hubs to, num to a score of one on this. Well, I wouldn't have thought it would uh, warrant score of one if there's going to be a sports hub right next door to it, assuming that gets planning permission, of course, because it's just been uh, put in. It does have the, the same entrance as that sports hub, so that needs to be taken on board as well. It may well be because it's referred to sort of obliquely of the uh, proposal that the town council has put in to, to have a sports hub there. But I think just some of those um, little details need to be just watched so that we're not making mistakes along the way that we could be pulled up on. OK, okay. Uh, uh, right. Thank you, councillor. And, you know, thank you for picking up on some of these detailed things. And I know that pens were scribbling away. Um, while you were making your remarks, um, the only I mean, you, you, I, um, I'm going to ask Richard to Mr. Palmer to respond on the detail um, and also the, the more substantive point that you made regarding potential um, yet other sites that um, you, you mentioned. Um, obviously, you know we need to get to a point where we are submitting a a. a um, a, a sound document to the planning inspectorate in not very much time, but I am going to ask Richard to respond on on both those matters. OK, thank you, Chair. Yeah, some detailed points, uh, Councillor Mercer, which we will pick up. We've been making notes of um, just a couple of things to come back from me here, I guess. Yeah, we, we use the option to keep it. Uh, we will need to, to define it more carefully, but we, we 
colloquially, if you like, use the option. There were two options. One was south of Newton Road and one one was the sort of southern option and one was the northern option. So effectively, that, that's why we'd use that. But if you look at the location to the south, it does, as you suggest, sit off those um, proposals. And for the consultation, we'll be very clear in terms of the location of that. And I guess as, as this process moves forward, we, we will use different terminology. But that was for the summary of the committee, I think, at that time, this north and south proposal, because that's the area we're looking at. But yes, fully take that on board. In relation to the other sites, I think that um, particularly around other settlements, it, it was a very clear steer from the Planning Policy Committee that all sites would be related to the designated growth town of Rushton and, and no other settlements. So that's why we, we only considered sites around Rushton. That said, I say we only, it is the starting point in terms of the strategic plan, of course, and um, the growth town itself, if it can provide a viable option, then, then that is the starting point. And realistically, going beyond that, if you can find something within the growth town, that really should be the answer to the question in the first place. Some of those other sites obviously have, have longer term potential. The particular one at Crow Hill, that, that was picked up actually by Natural England around, um, it's very close to the SPA and they do have objections to that particular site as well, but that, that's just the more detailed information. But it was, as I say, the, the growth town that, that was the de deciding factor there that we responded to. I think in terms of the, the recommendation, yeah, it, it's because there's a number of issues there that are still progressing and, you know, from one to ten, some of those have got nearer to being resolved than others. But for brevity of the the criteria or, or the, the recommendation response there, to list them, it, it really would be, be quite a long recommendation. So I think it's, there are a number of ongoing issues, some are nearer to being resolved than others. You, you've got those set out in, in the report and I think that that's where I would refer to in terms of um, how those issues are dealt with. So that that's why we said there are, there are various issues, if you like, that need to be resolved because that is the case. I think there were some other detailed issues, Councillor Mercer, but I, I concur with what you've said on those and we'll look at those in more detail. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Can just come back for a second, yeah. uh, Go ahead. Chair. Um, yeah, I did forget one other point is that uh, on page 61 of 136, it's mentioning about uh, access to schools and saying about Rushton Primary Academy and that possibly accessing to the Rushton East. It was alerted to me by a resident that there is no footpath along there and indeed a footpath along the bypass wouldn't probably be safe anyway. But but I, I would be quite worried about uh, children going from uh, this proposed site along that route. There might be other routes, probably a little bit further, you know, a detour where they're on pavements. But uh, um, I think we need to look at that. But I just like to say on the um, recommendation, I just felt that we ought to have in there somewhere that says the objections raised by Natural England to the Rushton West, because I, I think otherwise it doesn't really make sense. So. OK, OK. Um, uh, as far as that's concerned, um, Richard, on, on the recommendation, uh, you know, I think I thought the recommendation was fairly succinct and it certainly does mention the um, rush, you know, it, it said the objection of natural England. Does it not say to Russian Lakes West because my computer's just gone out and I've lost it, but it'll, yeah, come, well, hmm. it'll come back. Hang on. Yeah, I, I can just I can very quickly read that again to you because I appreciate councillors won't have that in front of them. So let me just read the recommendation as it stands. So it's acknowledged that the objection raised by Natural England remains unresolved. So that's the objection as a whole. Yeah. Therefore, a six week public consultation period be undertaken on the most preferable viable alternative site proposal identified as land to the south of Newton Road, Rushton and that the outcome of this consultation be reported back to PPC in early well, in December rather to allow the progression of the local plan within the timescales and set out in the report. So it doesn't actually mention Rushton Lakes West because it, it's not pertinent to that particular proposal here. It's and talking about that viable alternative. And also the objection um, by Natural England could to some extent, I mean, while they're not objecting to the new site um, land south of Newton Road, 
um, they are they note it's they they do still have some comments to make on it, do they not? Because of its vague proximity to the SPA. Yeah, I mean we we do have. I don't want to prolong the meeting in different directions, but I did remind you at the start of the meeting that James Riley is available if if members want to talk a little bit about that those issues um, in terms of the HRA and the appropriate assessment work. Okay, um, thank you. Um, um, Council North, you wanted to talk about timing. Did you need, did you want to talk right now? Because uh, Councillor Lewis is next. No, no, I'm taking my turn this time, okay. Kevin. Uh, Councillor Lewis, wherever you are, Councillor Lewis. Sir. Uh, yes, uh, I hope I'm here, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry about a bit of technological problems this evening, but uh, there, you there are. we are. Um, I'd firstly like to uh, thank the officers really for this uh, very extensive report that they have. Uh, provided us with tonight and I really appreciate the thoroughness with which the whole thing's been done um, in looking at these new sites. I was puzzled at the, the outset when we had these on um, last year, um, how the final list had come, but I think with these new sites it's interesting. Um, what does slightly puzzle me is that the site assessments on the 17th and the 12th last year uh, we're all done on basically a rag system. There was no scoring, which I believe is correct. Whereas this uh, particular group of four has been done on a rag system plus scoring. So we've got qualitative and quantitative uh, figures. And what you can't easily do is to compare like with like. Since they've both been scored against the identical 25 criteria, then it should be possible. And what I've done is instead of scoring one to four, if you go red, amber, green, one, two, three, uh, you actually find that um, you can very easily work out what the figures were for the earlier sites. And um, the thing that puzzles me there is, for instance, we've got the land tonight with a bypass off the A6 bypass etc John White has got 95 points going red amber green one two three and multiplying by 1.548 which seems to be the figure to come up to today's uh, scores we find Russian Lake scores 90 but interestingly the Russian South which is the east of New Newton Road also uh, scores 90 um, so from the quantitative assessments that we had before where you're looking at combinations of reds, amber and greens, it's very difficult to tie that down. So, um, you know, it's very pleasing in some ways to see that there is a, you know, the reason for pursuing this uh, new site with 95 points. It does stand out very clearly, but I'm very puzzled why the uh, Royston South East site was not considered any further because to me it um, looks as though that you know they score very similarly when you put the points in so it might be worthwhile if the officers could put the points in uh, in the similar uh, method so um, you know I really endorse everything that's uh, in the in the report and I congratulate the officers on the amount of effort they put into it um, so um, as far as the recommendation two is concerned, I find it very odd that you should start a recommendation saying acknowledge that the objection raised by any remains unresolved. Therefore, I don't really think you need that because it's almost implicit in the first recommendation. You know, it's uh, so I, I wouldn't particularly go along with that uh, um, amendment to that uh, item. But overall, as I say, thank the officers for a, a very comprehensive report and uh, support, basically support the recommendations. Thank you very much. OK, thank you, Councillor. OK, um, Councillor North. Yep, Councillor thank Max, you, I've seen your hand. It's not blue, yep. but I have seen it. Yes, um, it's just a matter of confirmation, Chairman. Um, in relation to um, where are we? Uh, four four point ten. In relation to the uh, what's what's later required, subject to everybody's agreement tonight. Um, 
it's just a matter of confirming chair that when uh, when we've had our next meeting in december and uh, and obviously we come to a conclusion and then obviously go out to the the uh, technical reg 19 consultation um in december that um there are no more deliberations after that point and That's after right. that reg 19 consultation that's to take place in january february that uh, that the pre-submission draft actually does go in um, to the Secretary of State and we no longer consult, deliberate, discuss it any further, any no more delays. As much as we'd love to probably respond on any further comments from the public, they would be down to the inspector to deliberate in the uh, in the public examination. So it's just a matter of confirmation, Chair, that when we're done in December, we are done and that uh, and that uh, that uh, that plan could be submitted is just seeking confirmation on that, Chair. That, that's absolutely right. And obviously, the um, Reg 19 consultation will no doubt attract the usual excitement from many people um, and you know hundreds of thousands of representations about this site that site or anything else but it is no longer anything to do with this authority um, and the submission plus the representations will all be considered by God and the planning inspectorate um so that, you, you you know i think that's a bit, that is an important point okay um i have councillor maxwell is there anybody else who'd like to speak uh, yep thank councillor peacock anybody else uh, who might not be visible on my screen councillor boto right so sarah peacock didn't councillor jenny have comments we didn't hear them he hasn't, he hasn't indicated well, it, it was hiding his sent comments to another meeting. Well, we yeah, didn't. No, we, we, we cleared that up already, yeah. but he may be biding his time. Anyway, um, Councillor Maxwell, please. Right. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just unmute myself now. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to say the report actually is really well written and uh, and explains exactly uh, the different options. However, I don't think we should uh, throw out the fact that uh, the Russian Lakes one, while some people may have some concerns about it, I do think that um, it's like any development uh, and you talk about schools, uh, children now normally, if, if they're living on the, uh, on the cross of out of town or wherever it may be, usually get transported into schools. That's not an issue now. However, it's the infrastructure. At the moment, we're, we are building more, but we're not actually putting in place uh, the fact that children need to go to school, they need to go to the doctors, etc., etc., And that has not been factored in. I feel that we have to factor this in. It's no good building more. We haven't seen what's happened with Russian Sioux at the moment, but it's no good building more without actually having the things in place. And I, I feel that if we're going to go to a consultation, which actually I think is a great idea, it's got to be carried out properly. It's no good doing a half measured thing. The residents must have a say in what goes on. It, you know, at the end of the day, this is their community. It isn't just, well, it, it doesn't matter. It does matter. And it's and it's making sure that every household is involved, not just a certain few around a particular area. And I feel that this consultation uh, has to be done thorough, transparent, and it has to be seen so that residents understand exactly what they're looking at. So I feel that the Russian Lakes one has to be part of the consultation. Am I right in thinking that's going to be the case? No? Um, Russian Lakes is, uh, is not part of the consultation as I understand it because it's already been consulted upon. Right. Right. Well, in that case, but it, I still feel it needs to be mentioned in the consultation so that the residents are aware of it because at the moment you've got one, two, three and four and that would mean that people would be looking at these sites and uh, not know about Russian lakes. So I think, you know, on the whole, I think we have to make sure that the residents are fully aware of what, what we're looking at 
and not just sort of uh, some people getting the consultations and others not. It should be open to everybody, it not is. just for a certain few. No, sorry, the councillor. And uh, every consultation on anything is open to anybody. Um, whether you are a stakeholder, whether you are a councillor or whether you are an individual member of the public, um, you are welcomed, you are encouraged to respond to any consultation, whatever it is, whether it be the national planning policy changes being suggested or whether it be a local uh, consultation on a particular local development. Um, so everything is um, entirely open, entirely transparent um, and entirely accessible. Um, so, you know, I, you know I, I agree with you that we do have to consult on these uh, matters and, and we do, which is, why, which is why we are actually having this, having a number of these recommendations. I don't know if you'd like to add anything, Richard. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, in relation to the, the question that um, Councillor Maxwell raised, I mean, it, there will be a consultation. Uh, obviously, with the COVID-19 restrictions, there won't be any exhibitions as such this time round. But one thing we will do is to have a virtual exhibition online, and that will be able to give, and does give, background to where we're at. Um, whilst we're not specifically consulting on Rushton Lakes West here, the background and what we've done will all be available to people. So it won't just be a, here's a new site, what do you think? You know, we put into context. So I can assure you that uh, we're working on that sort of website at the moment to make sure that that all tells the story of where we're at and where, and where we're, we're going at the moment. So that will all be addressed. I understand those comments that you've made and we will make sure that that's clear so that people can pick up on that when they wish to make their representation so they understand the whole picture. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Richard. Um, Councillor Peacock, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, just a few points again. Um, a, a report again, well written and, and, and much accepted and, and nice and easy to, to follow. However, just a few points that have been made um, and I agree with Councillor Maxwell, we need to make the public aware that this is an alternative site to Lake so that people are aware of that and not just a, an add-on. Um, from our point of view from the neighbourhood, Bridgeton Neighbourhood Plan, that still is a site where we want it to remain as an open space with no development on it, you know, to protect the birds and the wildlife. That's the whole point that it's there. To the north of the town, that is probably one of the only remaining sites that we've got left that is an open space and that separates us from Wellingborough and with Stanton Cross coming the other way. So that's still something we, we feel quite quite concerned about. Um, regarding the site that will go out for um, consultation as the alternative, we welcome that. We think it's better located with the Russian East and the growth agenda. Um, it's access then to the new sports hub that um, Councillor Mercer um, came talked about earlier that we've got a proposal in for also access to the schools and facilities that will be on Rushden East as well. So I think there's more of a connectivity this side on the south side of town than would be to the north. Um, so I think that's one thing that um, I think members would be that we that well, I personally and other members of the town council represented. Um, appreciate as well. And the point that Councillor Mercer made about the um, Manor Park site, it's already developed on probably three sides out of the four with housing. Um, so um, I think, you know, that that just needs to be kept in in check as well, because it's making it sound as if it's a, a toxic site when it's not when we've already got housing that surrounds it. So I think that just point just needs clarifying as well. Um, <clears throat> Um, I think that's all my points, but um, I look forward to the consultation and, and moving forward with, with the um, progress that we made to get this plan delivered at long last. Yep, thank you very much, Councillor Wise. <coughs> um, OK, Councillor Boto, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd add my comments. That I think uh, this is an excellent document and I'm pleased that we seem to have worked through a situation where by working on a parallel basis, we have the best of all options. My only uh, question of Richard is that if um, the Rushton Lake site does turn up trumps by December, and we can proceed with that site, uh, and bearing in mind that its yield would be 300 to 320 houses, um, what about the rebalance of the 130, 150 houses which the other site would offer? Uh, where would we look to fill up the balance to 450? 
by opt-in for Russian Mozart on its revised target number, which of course come down for all the reasons we know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again, Chair. Yeah, um, in terms of the capacity that's deliverable on Rushton Lakes West, uh, as mentioned during the presentation of the report, the proposal is that it could take up to 350. Um, that, that obviously needs some additional work to understand whether that would be the capacity on the site. So I don't want to get into the detail of that today, but suffice to say that um, around 150 or so additional uh, houses would be needed to to make up that um, uh, deficit if you like in terms of the plan the the assessment work does include a limited infill option which anticipates a smaller amount of development um, that would be development fronting Newton Road but that's not something that officers are saying to you that has to be the only option um, yes, it, it is more difficult to consider in detail where that, that would go. There's obviously opportunity within the the, um, the viable alternative sites to accommodate that. So, for example, it could be a smaller element of a preferred alternative site, um, such as the land, which we call in as an option. Um, but alternatively, it could be completely separate and just front Newton Road. I suppose it depends on the quantum of that development. That's the issue. But it is an issue and that's why I raised the um, the point in, in the report that the proposal that you're looking at in terms of Rushton Lakes West is not the same proposal that, that went to consultation in February, March. So there are further consequences beyond the SPA that need to be considered by councillors at a future planning policy committee if that option is pursued. I'm not saying it shouldn't be pursued, but if that option is pursued, it's not straightforward in that respect. You would, you would still need to look at the potential for additional development elsewhere. Um, but at this point in time, I, I can't clarify the absolute number of houses that that site could accommodate, other than to say it wouldn't be the amount that we require. Could I just come back on that, please, Chair? Yeah, you may. Yeah, fine, I understand that. But if we're going to have another 130 houses, whatever the figure is, somewhere else, and we have to consult on that at the same time, otherwise this is about as we just run short of the final total when we go to submission. I'm not quite clear how we stand vis-a-vis -vis this apparent shortfall and and us hitting the right time scale to yeah. get planning before quite Yeah, if I can come back on that, Chair. I mean, certainly the, the consultation could cover that point and should cover that point in terms of if there is an infill option, you know, what, what level of support would there be, for example, for land south of Newton Road or an alter a viable alternative to that? I think that would form part of the consultation. Um, obviously, there's going to be <coughs> potentially different outcomes, and I think that the, the consultation needs to make sure that it covers all those issues so that we can get those representations in and form a view when we come back for potentially what would be a meeting of the PPC in December, because if we want to get the plan submitted, we need to be very clear leading up to that of the position that we are taking. And that needs issues that currently have question marks against them resolved. Otherwise, we're back into the process to say that it will impact on the time scale or there's the potential that you'll be taking a plan to examination with um, risks that, that could be founded if, if an objection, for example, is not removed. So those are issues that you'll need to, to take into consideration. Um, but bearing in mind, we're also working on the final plan behind the scenes on all the other issues. You know, that, that plan will need to be drawn up pretty quickly. Um, so the idea would be that after tonight's meeting, if the resolution is pretty much as what's been recommended with the changes, then we would start that consultation very quickly to ensure that we have the as much time as possible to get to that position. Um, so we would look to start consultation around the 5th of October, but the, um, you know, the detail of that we would need to take into account. And obviously that issue, Councillor Boto, that you've raised would be forming a part of that consultation. Yeah, indeed. And the, if there is a specific agenda item, uh, one of the recommendations is to, is to is, addresses the detailed wording um, on the consultation, so a, a good point. Uh, Councillor North, please. 
Thank you, Chair. Picking up on, on Councillor Boto's point, unless I've misread it, Chair, um, page 24 and page 25 of the uh, of the document um, in relation to assessment alternative site options, I thought that covers that shortfall because the way I read that, that says we've got a no provision of uh, over provision in Higham and the actual number, the natural deficit is not 400 and so on. It is 385. Well, with the alternative um, suggestion from Russian Lakes West, they're, they're looking to deliver 350. So I, are we really quibbling in about 35 houses, Chair, or have I misread it? Additional to that, Chair, of course, is that whatever way you, you look at it, the uh, the alterations to the five year land supply and, that form and the formula is going to come in place before our plan is adopted. So I hope we're going to take all that into account and not over the situation in relation to um, the housing numbers in relation to this consultation. Yeah, OK, and I misread it because it seems very clear to me, Chair, in relation to the uh, in relation to the document. OK. Um, unless you have misread it, has he misread it, Richard? No. No. Well, it's, it's a moving feast, isn't it, in terms of the absolute numbers? But I think, you know, we need to understand what that quantum of development could, could provide on Rushton Lakes West, and we need to understand what a reasonable amount of um, additional development that would take us to a what I call a, a good situation to take into examination. Figures can change all the while, of course. So we, you know, this, this 450 is is based on on the work that we did last year for you. Um, figures can go up and down a bit, um, but there would be a reasonable amount of development that would need to be found elsewhere. Um, but there's not to say that we couldn't provide options for that. OK, right. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mercy wanted to come back quickly. Yeah, it was really just to clarify on these two um, uh, proposals. It still says, um, get the right page, um, south of Newton Road. It, it's not south of Newton Road um, in one and two. It, everywhere else in the documents, it's um, however it's described, um, it, it's Bedford Road. Um, in, in the actual on page 33, it's land wet, uh, sorry, land east of the A6 bypass stroke west of John White Golf Club, Bedford Road. So, I mean, it, we could sort of cut that a bit short, but I really think we shouldn't have Newton Road in there when it's actually anywhere near Newton Road or else we'll really uh, confuse matters. We need uh, to be somebody quick. hasn't been following the debate plus you know all the discussions and they don't know exactly which I mean even if you, you just say option three that has been you know um, assessed or something like that because that's what we're talking about isn't it option three there um, uh, I'm, I'm also take up somebody's point that said to start with acknowledge the objection raised by uh, actually I don't know whether we want to keep that in but I'm just remind everyone that uh, you know whether they think that's okay it's it's really just making sure that we're clear um on that resolution okay. that's all okay well can we make sure that we are clear about the 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 land that we're talking about and how it is described and describe it in that way only in future yeah yeah as i mentioned we, we, will, we will make sure that all the references are consistent yeah. as i say it started off with an ordinance of an option but i take your point councillor mercer we will uh, for the consultation be very clear as to the location okay but in the resolution i'm thinking not just in the consultation um oh i see in the actual recommendation itself yeah oh, well through you chair I, I see no reason why it can't rather than say south of Newton Road, it, it can't be a little bit more precise around the wording of where the site lies. I see no reason why not. I see no reason why not if it's what it is. No. OK, I've got hands waving. I've got Councillor Jenny. Then I've got Councillor Maxwell and I've got Councillor Lewis. Councillor Jenny, please. I said you were biding your time. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, talk about biding time. We've had an hour and 20 minutes on this, and I think when we first started, I was still in short trousers. Oh. Uh, the, I just wanted to alert people to the risks of not getting on with this because the white paper that's coming through is likely to subsume all of this. And if we don't get on with it and get it, get it consulted on, then we may well be talking about not three or four hundred houses. We could be talking several thousand houses. Agreed. So 
So please, can we, <laughs> can we just get on with it? Yeah. I mean, obviously that is important. We do have to, you know, and, and tonight's discussion is, is all well, but we do have to get on with submitting a local plan. The meeting we will have in December will be the last meeting of the planning policy committee that is considering any changes or detail. We have to get it right. So this is the second last meeting because I'm not counting the special meeting we're holding next month regarding the white paper, but we are going to have to have, if we are going to submit a local plan, we are going to have to have all our ducks in a row in December. And that, and when we finish that meeting in December, that will be it. So it's going to be quite important that we um, concentrate on this. Um, right, um, two quick, quick comebacks, please, Councillor Maxwell. Yeah, it's a suggestion actually. Uh -huh. When you actually put out the consultation, given what uh, uh, Councillor Mercer has actually said, I think if you had a mini map along with the consultation, people would be a lot more au fait with exactly where you're talking about. That's my suggestion. OK, thank you. I think it will have sufficient maps to be quite clear what it means. Um, but yeah, absolutely. It's, it's good to see what we're, where we are talking about. Councillor Lewis, please. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. It's only just a quickie for clarification because there is a little bit of uh, uh, dif uh, difference between what this place is called. On pages 56 and 57, it is land east of the A6 bypass stroke west of John Mark Golf Club, Bedford Road. And I think that's what needs to go in and consistently go in so we know exactly where we are because the piece of land near Newton Road, as I mentioned earlier, actually scores as well as Roseland Lakes West in my calculation. So uh, quite important to be specific about what we're talking about. OK, I think that point's well made. And when we um, come to the recommendations, which I hope we're about to do, um, can the recommendations be amended to use th that wording only, please? OK, um, so is there, I, I think there's nobody else wanting to speak. Therefore, um, we now move to the recommendations and they are slightly changed as we've discussed. Um, so can we, uh, is it your wish that we take these in block or do we want to do them one at a time? Um, anybody got strong ideas? Happy to do that, Chair, because there's been some time, exchanges, yes. perhaps, perhaps we'll to do them one at a time, Chairman. Yeah, I think it might be wiser. So, um, Recommendation 14.1. The committee is recommended to approve the site on land to the south of Newton Road, Rushton. That will be amended to to read whatever to read the the correct designation as an alternative viable site in place of a potential in, site no, allocation. No, no, sorry, in parallel. Sorry, Jill, it's okay. <laughs> You're quite right. You were just testing, Chevin. You were just, just testing. testing. You, you, you let me, that was about a nanosecond. Fast work. Anyway, as an alternative viable site in parallel with the potential site allocation at Rushton Lakes West. May I have a proposal, please? Move, Chairman. Thank you. Second up? Second, Chairman. Thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Say aye if you, if you, if, if you can. Aye. 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 Are there any against? Are there any abstentions? Recommendation one is carried. Uh, recommendation two is to agree to undertake a six week public consultation period on the proposal to allocate land to the south of Newton Road, Rushton. It will be amended to meet the strategic requirements for future housing provision. Chairman, there was an alternative wording that Richard... Yes, sir. Oh yes, there was. I'm, my computer's just gone down again. Um, could somebody kindly, Richard, read me the Richard, alternative got, word? Sorry? Richard. Richard has got the uh, wording. Yes. Richard, recommendation two, please. Yes, Chair, I'm just trying to get that up on the screen. Yeah, I am too. I'll race you. <laughs> OK, I've got it then. Um, so as it stands, and there was some 
sort of talk around the actual word and it, it, it stands as follows. The committee is recommended to acknowledge that the objection raised by Natural England remains unresolved. Therefore, a six week public consultation period be undertaken on the most preferable viable alternative site proposal identified as land to the south of Newton Road, Rushton. Um, and of course, we can change the, the uh, yeah. location of that accordingly. And that the outcome of this consultation be reported back to PPC in December to allow the progression of the local plan in line with the timescale set out in paragraph 4.10 of this report. OK. Um, may I have a proposal? Sorry, Councillor Lewis. Well, I'd like to propose an amendment to that where you delete the acknowledge that the objection raised by North East, etc. to that to, to therefore so that it starts off as a six week public consultation period will be undertaken um, because I believe that it's actually, you know, that objection is implicit in the other recommendations. <clears throat> OK, well, at the moment there has not yet been a proposal. Um, so the question is whether um, your amendment is satisfactory um, and that if it were, it could be the proposal. <clears throat> um, so could you just do do your amendment again, please, Richard? Well, but merely, <coughs> yeah, um, just merely, oh, sorry, yeah, and merely that you take out acknowledged through to therefore and it starts a six week public consultation period and then as per uh, Richard has uh, stated. OK, and you would propose that. <laughs> You're muted. Yes, I see. Yes, it's good. It's, it's a double click touch here. I would like to propose that amendment. Okay. You, need the, you need the reference to Rushton and Lakes West, surely. Otherwise, it sits there completely dis, dis, disconnected with anything else. And they, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me, to be honest, at the moment, Chairman. Chairman, I, I would have thought uh, that leaving it as it is, but perhaps adding in uh, the reference to the Rushton Lakes West might make it a bit, make a bit more sense. OK. Would you be happy with that, Richard? Well, Rushton Lakes has already had its own public consultation, so you're not going to proceed with it again, are you? No, but it's setting the context, isn't it? Rather than talking about consultation of Rushton Lakes West. No, this is consultation for the option for the, three, though, yes, isn't it? That's right. Well, it's got anything to do with Rushton Lakes in that sense. Right. But if, if no one would, would will second that, then obviously uh, you proceed with the main, the original motion. OK, well, do I propose it for the for the original motion? With the original recommendation, that is recommendation two as amended. Could you just repeat that again? We haven't actually asked if there's anyone who will second my amendment. OK, well, does anyone second Councillor Lewis's amendment? Which is to take out that first uh, sort of first half of the sentence. Yeah, because for clarification, that part two is just a consultation on, on option three, isn't it? Doesn't bring in the, in the original. There's nothing in there about the lakes because that's already been consulted on. Can we have clarification from Richard Palmer? Yes, Richard. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think that first part sets the context, really. I think it's important that it, it's raised that you acknowledge that there are still unresolved objections in relation to Rushton Lakes West, because that's the factual point. And if you take that out, I think the recommendation does lose some, something in that respect. Um, yeah, there is a six week consultation to be undertaken, but that sort of explains the position behind why that's being done. So, I, you know, I, I feel that that needs to remain in there. It doesn't it doesn't restrict you to anything. So I don't know, you know, we, we could reword and reword, but I, I think it needs to be there to explain the context. The consultation will, will, will allow further consideration further down the line. So it's not a restricting recommendation. I, I just think you know, I'm repeating myself really, but I just think it, it explains the context better. OK, okay. right. Well, thank you. Thank you for that, Richard. Um, R Councillor Lewis, are you satisfied with um, with Mr. Palmer's explanation? Uh, 
Oh, right, yes. Well, uh, yes, but I mean, I noticed that um, the first recommendation was actually written by uh, the Crown Estates, I believe. Um, and in fact, looking at their second recommendation, um, with minor changes to that, uh, agree to undertake a six week public consultation period on the proposal to allocate land to this out that's wrong to meet the street requirements for future housing prov provision if concerns raised by could be simply acknowledging concerns raised by are not capable of being addressed. You know, so I mean, it's uh, we've been totally wiped out in the first one by uh, a third party. Yeah. And um, I don't think the second one really should start off that, you know, acknowledgement should come at the end of the, the recommendation, in my opinion, at least, rather than at the start of it. I but would if there's no one seconds that, then that's the end of it. The, the, the idea. I would second the idea, Richard, of it, put the acknowledgement in at the back end of the sentence rather than the beginning of the sentence. Okay. Yeah. Set. Okay, I see consensus beginning to emerge. Richard, uh, Mr. Palmer, would that would 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 putting the new would putting the um, natural England at the end rather than the beginning of the recommendation um, be be satisfactory? Well, before I, I, I sort of offer any thoughts, I know Rob Harbour, the strategic director, is oh, yes, indicated he'd like to speak, so I'll probably leave it to Rob to to see what he has to say. OK, yes, uh, Mr. Harbour, sorry, I've just seen you on the chat. Yes, if you'd like to speak. Oh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Chairman. Uh, it was only a quick point and it, and it, it may be a slightly moot one now, um, but I, I was slightly concerned with, with the thought that we might be reverting to a second recommendation written by the Crown Estate. Um, my, my concern with that is I think that recommendation needs to be clear around some kind of uh, constraint over process and time which was what uh, Richard's proposed recommendation number two sought to do. Personally, I, I think um, that the, the issue around um, the outstanding objection from Natural England does set some context, but I would agree with Councillor Mercer uh, that it, indeed it, it would be helpful uh, if actually there was a reference to the Russian Lakes West site associated with that. Mm. So. My personal feeling is that if that was put forward as a as a as a motion, um, that in effect uh, that that Councillor Mercer uh, described, then I, I I think that that would uh, achieve what uh, what the committee is is attempting to do. And I've heard a, an awful lot of discussion and debate around that uh, tonight. And I and I think by and large, um, you know, the, the committee is generally fairly happy with the direction that this is taking. Um, so that I, I just thought I'd, I'd jump in there on on the basis that we we seem to be heading uh, away from uh, fr from Richard's proposal. Chairman, in, in view of that, could I uh, make a, a proposal that we do just what Rob Harbour's just said and change amend it to say acknowledging the objection raised by Natural England um, on the Rushton Way. Uh, Lakes West site remains unresolved, blah, 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 and have the rest all the same. So just adding in that the uh, objection is on the Russian Lakes West and leave all the rest the same. I think if you're seeking to try and clarify, that helps clarify. It keeps, it, it just didn't seem to make sense without that Russian Lakes West in, but I didn't want to take it out necessarily, as Richard suggested, because it takes away the context. So is that possible? Is, it, is everyone happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else want to make any comment on this? OK. Well, then may I have a proposer um, that we adopt as Councillor Mercer? Um, has I'll just... propose that, Chairman. Thank you. I'll, and a seconder? I'll, I'll probably second it, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. All right. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Are there any against? Aye. Are there any against? Are there any abstentions? Okay, recommendation two as amended um, is carried. Um, now, we now turn to recommendation three, which is very important, um, and that is 
to agree to the inclusion of a local plan part two chapter on the Rushton East Sustainable Urban Extension and to undertake a six week public consultation on this. Moved, yeah. Thank you. Seconded. All right. All those in, thank you. Um, any amendments? All those in favour? Aye. 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 Are there any against? Are there any abstentions? That's carried. Um, recommendation four, um, approve amendments to the local development scheme to reflect the change to the local plan part two time scale. May I have a mover, please? Move, Chair. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all, are there any amendments? All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Are there any against? Are there any abstentions? That's carried. OK, slight change here. Recommendation five, delegate the detailed working wording re related to all elements of the proposed public consultation on the alternative viable sites and Rushton East SUE policy to the head of planning services and consultation with the chair and deputy chair of the planning policy committee and the chairman of the Rushton East um, Sustainable Urban Extension uh, Working Party. Uh, thank you. Seconded, please. Seconded, Chair. Thank you. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Are there any against? Are there any abstentions? Yes. Who, who abstained? Yes, I have. OK, thank you, Councillor. Um, the the um, recommendation is carried. OK, thank you. And um, that's the um, item one that's the item um on that we now move to agenda item six just give me a moment while i find it and that is the adoption of the Cotterstock village design statement spd um and i said before um what an excellent piece of work the draft design statement was it's gone out to consultation it's an absolute fascinating tour of Cotterstock and its history, which is quite substantial. And I would like to just place on record of this meeting uh, my congratulations and thanks to everybody um, who's been involved um, in drawing this document up and the officers for all their hard work in assisting them. And so we have, I think uh, Mr. Burton will take us through this paper. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you, can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Right. OK, um, I'll keep this quite brief. Um, last planning policy committee, um, uh, we approved, uh, the committee approved the draft of the village design statement for consultation. And the consultation then took place between 26th of June and 10th of August. So it was a, a six week consultation. It's quite interesting because it is, in fact, it was the sort of first statutory consultation that we've done, which undertaken under the, the sort of emergency COVID-19 regs. So it did present some particular challenges. So, but I mean, the statutory requirements for four weeks for a supplementary planning document and this will become, but we we house hosted it for six weeks just to uh, allow, just allow a, an extra contingency there. I say we had a good feedback. Um, 24 responses were received during the consultation, and then from uh, yeah. consultation bodies that's historic in the natural England plus 19 from individual residents of Cotterstock so I mean the vast bulk of the the uh, overwhelming bulk of, of response have been have been positive very supportive of the proposals and yeah and really uh, well I mean all I could say really is um I mean, there was there was only one there was one single objection from a resident, uh, and I, I refer to paragraph three point three of the report, my colleague and Dick's report, and um, the uh, and that and that was raised. That was followed up by an, an email on the sixteenth of um, 
16th of September from uh, representatives of the village design statement expressing concerns about this this objection. But I would emphasise that this is largely academic. We're not proposing to make any changes in response to this objection about relating to um, um, in infilling and uh, backland development. So it, it, it's fairly academic. It's a, it's a moot point. So really, um, there, there are a, a tiny number of changes. In fact, two factual corrections have been highlighted through the consultation, and these are set out of paragraph 4.3 of the report. So, um, I mean, both factual corrections about Cotstock Mill Fire and the listed status of Cotstock Lodge. So, really, it just comes comes to me to to sort of present the. Uh, the recommendation that the um, the Codstock Village Design Statement should be uh, should be approved as a statutory supplementary planning document, uh, and it it obviously be accorded the weight the due weight as, as through the statutory uh, part, statutory regulations for the planning system. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Burton. Excellent. OK, um, does anybody wish to speak on this? <laughs> OK, well, no, I mean, it's um, uh, um, as the ward councillor, um, first of all, I, as I said in my opening remarks, um, I'm very pleased to see this document and, you know, it's a, it's a cracking document. Well done. And as I am the ward councillor, I'd like to, from the chair, propose uh, adoption recommendation to adopt the Protestant Village Design Statement as an SPD in accordance with Town and Country Planning, Local Planning England Regulations 2012, Regulation 14. Uh, may, might I have a seconder, please? I'd like to I'd second like that, Chair. That, yes. Thank you, Councillor Peacock. Um, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Are there any against? And are there any abstentions? That then that's carried. Excellent. Right. Um, we now move to um, a slight change to the running order, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> now we'll take uh, agenda item eight, which is uh, Ministry of Communities. Um, oh dear, I can't even remember what the image. M-A-M-C-H-L-G, I know it's local government, communities, homes and local government. Thank the Lord for that. I nearly, <laughs> I nearly failed the test. And changes to the current planning system consultation, 6th of August to the 1st of October 2020. Now, before um, we set the context here, it is important to differentiate this, dot, this particular consultation from the other major um, potential changes to the government's planning system, which is contained in the white paper planning for the future. We are not discussing that document this evening. Uh, we are having a special meeting of the Planning Policy Committee on the 19th of October um, to discuss um, East North Hans response to that document. So this particular um, discussion um, relates to the um, other changes that the um, ministry uh, are likely to be landing on us. And I think it's you again. Is it you again, Richard? I think. Uh, uh, oh, no. Yeah, it's it's Sorry, Michael. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, uh, thank you. And uh, I was uh, I was just uh, just um, having a uh, uh, being a hassle by my cat, so oh. <laughs> apologies uh, for any distraction. He, he's, he's, uh, apologies, Mike. Apologies, <laughs> Chairman. Um, <laughs> just before you do get into this item, we're coming up on nine o'clock. Before you get into the depths of this item, would it be yeah. okay to propose to extend the meeting, perhaps, and then continue with this item, if that's okay? Thank you, thank you, uh, Charlie. Yes, um, if I can find a proposer. Proposed, Chair. Thank you, and a seconder. Seconded, Chair. And sufficient um, voters to um, go for it. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. <laughs> yeah, the excitement's there. All. Are there any against? And are there any abstentions? Don't you dare. Uh, okay, that's carried. Thank you, Charlie. So, Michael, off you go. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I would say, really, I. 
as 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 you've correctly pointed out, I say this is actually a very important consultation. In fact, certainly at a professional level, I, I was quite concerned about some of the content of this this government consultation. It was released, published on the sixth of August, the same date as the planning white paper, which which obviously had a, had a great deal of fanfare, and this was also brought out at the same time. And it has far more immediate consequences for us, us in terms of both plan yeah plan making and development management so i think really uh, i've been through the document you know as, uh, and i've spoken with colleagues about this we've been through it with a very fine tooth comb um br briefly there's 35 consultation questions so it's quite a quite a lot to work through and but it proposes four main changes. And the first one perhaps is, is perhaps the most alarming is the proposal to revise the standard method for assessing housing numbers, which uh, has big implications for us um, if, if, that, um, if that is carried through. Secondly, it's about delivering first homes. And again, it's setting, a, it's almost setting a national requirement that 25% must be these first homes, which, you know, this sort of 30% mark discount market housing. So again, that's another potentially another example of where the councils, where our ability to obviously to respond to local need is, is slightly diminished. Thirdly, it's again on affordable housing and the uh, proposals to temporarily reduce the or raise a threshold for for where we can seek affordable housing contributions from um, 10 or 15 up to 40 or 50. So that's a pretty massive increase. And, and lastly, it's also the proposal to increase thresholds for where permission in principle is sought. So I mean, there's some quite big changes here. I'll go particularly on to the standard method for assessing housing because um, Litchfields did some research and our, our colleagues, our colleagues at the Joint Planning Unit have also checked this and um, and, and if if um, if they were if these proposed standard methodologies adopted as from the work that the government's done, we, we would have to effectively double our housing requirement from from eight from 420 which are cut up to 820 a year and that is is a very big very big figure and in fact and, and i think we have raised at paragraph 3.3 the concern that this is wholly unachievable and therefore undeliverable secondly similarly on on first homes i've already mentioned we have concerns that again we're taking away our ability as a local authority to manage you know, to manage, you know, housing to meet local needs. So that's our concern there. And then similarly, on a similar note, we again, the raising of the affordable housing threshold again, uh, sets a precedent that is reducing our ability to um, bring in, uh, you know, to bring in uh, affordable housing to meet local needs. And then lastly, the proposal for expanding permission in principle currently only relates to minor applications that's less than 10 dwellings or less than a thousand square meters if you're proposing to raise it to include major schemes you're it is almost the argument it's sidelining the development management system so really i uh, just to conclude i'll say my report summarizes the headline the proposed changes I'm sorry for you know if they sound quite dramatic, but I, I do believe that they are of major concern to us. And um, so, really, I just sort of say that to to, to, the, to the committee, I'm just asking for your uh, recommendation to approve our response to the government changes to the current planning system consultation paper, and that's all set out at Appendix One to my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Michael and you and your colleagues for your very clear um, responses <laughs> to the consultation um, and 
<laughs> you know, it is it is rare that we get a document which is so much a piece of dynamite that crosses the, the, the chaste bowels of the planning policy committee, but this is one of them. It is one of two, but this one in many ways, while it's not as radical um, in, in the in the strategic sense, this one has got direct impact on what we are doing in North in East Northamptonshire and North Northamptonshire um over over the coming over the coming years it's an enormously important document um anyway um i have got councillor mercer please thank you i'd like to thank mike um an excellent uh, document agree wholeheartedly with everything he said um we we can't it, it's i mean it's fairly technical in in the, your reply um, but I think the government will probably respond to that sort of technical um, nature of the response. But basically, it's an absolute nightmare, uh, all four of these proposals. Um, and so I agree with it wholeheartedly. Just being a bit picky on number four, there are two spelling mistakes. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Consider simplistic in uh, the second paragraph and a by rather than a b in the next paragraph. Uh, but uh, you know, um, I, the only other thing I'd say is that that I just wonder if there's uh, anywhere where it says um, any other comments, please, because I think we ought to send back a comment. You're attacking this at the wrong end. It is not local authorities that you need to be getting to build uh, to give more uh, planning permissions we are giving planning permissions we are quite happy to have building and growth and no matter how many we give if the, the builders don't build them you're just uh, meaning that uh, the buildings are going in the wrong place necessarily because you've got far too many um, sites allocated uh, compared to uh, the optimum ones so if there isn't any other um, questions at the end somewhere, um, I'll, I'll be happy to add that. Mm. OK, thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor North, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, when I read under 1.2, uh, this report provides an objective assessment. I, I always get concerns because that normally means a good old British compromise and and uh, the office is not likely to respond or upset anybody. And then I read the report, Chairman. So, uh, so well done. I don't think in all of my time as a councillor, I've seen an object to, to a government consultation on any of the main points. And obviously there's an objection on all of them. So that just shows you, uh, Chairman, and I think I echo your words. You've got the white paper at a future meeting, but uh, Absolutely, I think this is more dangerous and was kind of under the under the carpet and uh, and it's fundamentally wrong in, in every way. So I very much welcome and support the comments written in the paper from our officers and from the comments from Jill and, and from yourself, Mr Chairman. This is a very, very dangerous time in relation to housing delivery. As Councillor Mercer says, there's plenty of permissions across the country. Mm -hmm. If we don't break the way things are done, that's the only way to improve it. That's the mm -hmm. supply and demand. And uh, to, to make the changes in relation to um, also removing the democracy element from member involvement as well is uh, is fundamentally alarming, Chairman. So nothing more for me to add, really. Just very much welcome the responses. And objective means objective, and we object to all the responses. So uh, well done on all of that. Um, thank you very much, um, Councillor North. Um, as, you, as usual, I think you hit the nail right on the crumpet. Um, Councillor Jenny, please. Councillor Maxwell, I've seen you. Myself. Right. Okay, Councillor Lewis. Um, I would like to, like to say. Oh, sorry, um, can, hang on, hang on. Can, sorry, uh, I have seen you, Councillor Maxwell. Oh, well, you don't want to speak. Turn, though. Councillor Jenny, please. You're muted. Councillor Jenny, yeah, there you are. You're with us. Sorry about that. My cursor shut off onto the other screen. Um, I really like to thank Michael Burton for, for this response because it is exceedingly thorough. The 
The whole premise of this consultation is absolutely, totally disastrous to local democracy, and we cannot allow this to go through. It's, uh, it's just absolutely appalling. So everything that has been written here, I totally support. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Boto, please. It is beginning to get a bit familiar, I think. I saw uh, Councillor Jenny Wright. May I condemn this consultation, please? And I put me too. And I think certainly the flavour uh, is shared by myself. An absolute disaster, a complete mockery of democracy, and uh, I really appalling. That's what I've got to say, really. Well, they'll get rid of the democracy bit in the next paper, but anyway, more of that anon. But uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, how about you, Councillor Maxwell? Now I can speak. I'd like to say it's it's very well written what you've actually said. What I would like to say is to add is that the Localism Act of 2011 needs to be brought into this document because it clearly states that residents should have a say on what goes on in their area. And this clearly is not, not the case. Equally, planning inspectors do get it wrong. And if this document if this was allowed to happen, then we would have no say in things that go forward. So I feel that the localism app should be included to in, to actually show that um, people must have a say, and this would mean they'd have no say. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Lewis, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Very briefly, folks have made some of these comments, but uh, a complicated consultation. And thanks to the officers, really, for guiding us through this uh, minefield. Um, and uh, what I find is that fundamentally, this is less officer involvement, which means even less member involvement. Um, we won't be able to make the decisions. So thanks for the clear responses, and I fully support the uh, responses that uh, you created. Well done. OK, right. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak to this item? OK, uh, well, I think, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we... Sorry, Chairman, I think Councillor Wrightcold was trying to oh. wave. That ah, OK, so he yes, was able to unmute himself, I think. Is OK, Councillor Wrightcold, are you there? Uh, I'm being unmuted. Uh, yes, Emma, you are. Can you unmute me? You please? are unmuted. You are unmuted. Uh, 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 thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Emma. Um, my elder daughter uh, understands the technology much better than I ever will. Mr. Chairman, I entirely agree with all the comments our colleagues have made, and I congratulate Michael Burton on just the paper we need. He has hit the nail on the head roundly. So, the, the paper provides a clear basis for for the intellectual and professional part of our robust response to central government, which can be supplemented by, by a, a robust political response. So I fully support uh, the, the recommendation that, that we approve the recommendation of the paper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor. OK, is there anybody else who'd like to speak to this? Councillor Peacock, I see. Yeah, I just simply want to put something in writing as a as a, a thank you um, to Mar Michael for this superb um, report. Uh, it needs to be minuted in in, in our minutes of the report that's been put forward to us. It's all very well yeah, with it verbally, but it's not always carried through. So I think it needs to be minuted. I'll support that, Chairman. Uh, yeah. You know, excellent suggestion. I think not just this, but some of the other papers. Well, all the other papers Absolutely. tonight. A tremendous amount yeah. of work has gone in, and yeah. I think the whole the whole papers tonight mm -hmm. need to be noted, as Sarah said, as a big thank you for all the hard work that's gone in and actually yeah. minuted. Absolutely. Especially yeah. in difficult times. And yes, I, I I I completely agree with that. Um, yeah. There has been a tremendous amount of hard work being put in. I mean, this government, um, you know, the consultations that we've just been dealing with have taken up a lot of officer time when the officers don't have time, when they're working very hard on other stuff that we need to do to get the local plan through. And so it reflects enormous credit on all the officer team for all their hard work and doing in, in getting the um, consultation responded to. So well done, Michael. Pat on the back. And if you're not too embarrassed, I noticed you got your hand up. Would you like to say something, sir? 
Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, just a couple of notes. I've just taken some notes um, on the points that Councillor Councillor Mercer and Councillor Maxwell made. I, I'll, I'll certainly be picking those up in in a sort of covering email that we send off send off for, for this consultation. But yeah, um, um, thank you for all, all your endorsement, and um, I, I feel that my hard work on this this was worthwhile. So thank you. And, and please make sure whoever compiles the minutes that it reflects um, the committee's high appreciation. Thanks. It will. Okay. Um, right. Well, anyway, so that was an entertaining little document. Um, and we have a recommendation. And that at 14.1 is to the committee is recommended to approve the council's response to the government's changes to the current planning system consultation paper at Appendix 1 to this report. I, I emphasize it is to approve the council's response, not to approve the document itself. Um, so might I have a proposal, please? Proposed, Chair. Thank you. And a seconder? Seconded, okay. Chair. Thank you. Uh, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Are there any against? Are there any abstentions? The recommendation is carried. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. OK, we now move to the uh, what was agenda item seven. Um, we're, we're actually making quite good progress tonight. I mean, it's a little over the two hours, but it's not as bad as it um, sometimes can be. Anyway, agenda item seven, and um, this report seeks the Planning Policy Committee's endorsement of the officer response to the Bedford Borough's local plan review. And I know that that's caused some um, discussion and debate, especially in the south of the district. Um, so it might um, it might have a little bit of um, chat chat about this. And um, Michael, I think you're on again. In uh, case thank, you've got nothing better to do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, um, we we've certainly found that um, we are we are doing quite a lot of you know quite involved in quite some detailed discussion with our colleagues in Bedford because there are things happening down in the borough that do have implications for us and that's why we've uh, taken taken this report just briefly then um the bedford have very rapidly launched their local plan review they only had their current local plan was adopted back in january so um this is their formal launch and um and it is quite a significant consultation i mean they're they're 13 questions it talks about um the spatial strategy issues such as climate change. So, I mean, they're really, I think we're particularly interested from our perspective in the spatial strategy. Now, they've proposed six um, colour coded options of which um, at Appendix 4, I would refer you to. We're particularly interested in the um, brown option and the red option. The brown option is, I think, potentially for expansion of, yeah, uh, of the urban areas of Ru Rush of Rushton and also St Neot, but within the borough of Bedford, and then, and then the new settlements, which certainly was the way that um, the previous local plan was looking to go, but was not taken forward. So, really. Um, I just want to say, just by word of a clarification on this, we, we have submitted our comments to meet the deadline of 4th of September, so they have already been submitted, but we've submitted them as draft comments because I thought this, this is quite an important consultation is in order to get a sort of further feedback or endorsement from members of the Planning Policy Committee. So any, any other comments or thoughts that come out this committee, we can also submit them forward them to the uh, forward to our colleagues at bedford borough so that's all re really i just want to take to you so there's two parts of the endorsement one to endorse our draft response secondly to allow uh, other additional comments from members to also be taken forward so thank you okay. um one comment i've got um is about the vague proposal to put some railway station in at Wimmington. Um, well, I don't know how that would work because the lines divide down there. And so you've got three lines coming, you know, which are together 
um, and one line which is on the, on a big loop and disappears into a tunnel. So I don't know how you could possibly build a station um, in that area because um, you, you know the platforms would be about a mile apart. Um, it, it, anyway, it's a, it's a detail, but um, it, it's um, something which is which has often confused me about that. Anyway, um, another excellent paper and another lot of very interesting and detailed responses. So thanks again, Michael. Um, and Councillor Mercer, please. Thank you. Um, well, it's not really a response to this, but I think they've got a cheek <laughs> um, trying to expand Rushton when basically uh, they will take the uh, council tax and we'll end up having to uh, support the infrastructure. Um, but well done to Mike on the um, response. Um, I would say, though, that uh, in various places like question four near the, at the bottom of that page and then um, over page, uh, so it must be question five. Yeah, question four and five. Um, I would add in, it, I mean, you've mentioned the the train, the station, yeah. um, and that has always been an aspiration of uh, uh, us that we would have some sort of station uh, around that area, whether it be Wilmington, Sharnbrook, Colchester. Um, but there are other aspiration, and it has was, I think, put in the joint core strategy. Um, is a western bypass around Rushton. So I wonder if you know if they're going to start uh, foisting loads of houses on us, you really need to do something about the A6 and that traffic all coming straight through the centre of Rushton. Because believe me, if they want to go to Northampton, they will not go around the bypass. It will be too far round. So we've always hankered after a Western bypass. Um, and so I will put it in in question four and five. Um, and the other one um, in question 11, I've put a note uh, that, that ENC has not got any station. And so basically a lot of people from Rushton, certainly and probably around us, travel down to Bedford uh, regularly for um, uh, transport, especially to London. So um, a station would be um, appreciated if they're going to uh, um, try and um, put lots of houses. Um, and the same at, uh, at the comments in question 13, where it says um, a new middle mainline rail station, be it at Colworth, Chambrook or Wimington. I mean, I don't know if we can add or register there, um, but uh, the, the, they're going to try and uh, put extra houses. They're going to try and put them to the south of Rushton. We're already looking into one site that end ourselves. I can see um, that expanding and expanding. And if we don't have the infrastructure, it's going to be exceedingly unpleasant to travel on that A6 and uh, it will then uh, have a knock on effect to uh, the bypass and Rushton East as well. So, um, uh, you know, any infrastructure, if they if they get the go ahead, any infrastructure that comes our way, we will have to grab. OK, right. I mean, certainly the only thing I would say about the railway, uh, and this is another little hobby horse of mine, is that the fares from Bedford to London are considerably very much cheaper than they are any point further north. It's, at the moment, it's obviously Wellingborough and Kettering. So if ever a station were opened in the Urchester, Wilmington, Sharnbrook area, um, it would be interesting to know how much the fares would be because they are a huge deterrent. I mean, I don't use the Midland Main Line into London um, because living where I live in Thrapston, I can get to Huntingdon uh, in roughly the same time as I could get to Kettering and it's nearly half the price. So that's something that's nothing to do with us. It's just a strategic point for the future. But anyway, your points are you know, good points and um, I agree with you about infrastructure. Um, Councillor Jenny, please. I think your curse has done it again, dear Councillor. So, reference paragraph A8 under the Oxford Cambridge Arc. Uh, Bed Bedford have got major problems with housing. 
Um, they're not going to be able to get anywhere near their arc targets, um, even even before the um, government starts twist, twisting the figures. And I do take exception to that last sentence where Northamptonshire is uh, sort of mentioned as an almost as an aside. It is important to note that this also covers Northamptonshire. Well, so that you know we're going to have to do an awful lot for that. And then going on to page um, paragraph A13. Expansion with the borough boundary of neighbouring urban areas such as Rushton and St Dick's and Neart. Well, they've got track record of East Eaton Soken and uh, places like that of um, uh, putting as much uh, housing as they possibly can. We're already suffering in this part of the world from them with the chicken sheds and one thing or another. Um, it, it just seems to be their policy that they're going to shove everything right out to their extremities and expect everybody else to pick it up. So um, I concur with um, Gas and Mercer's comments about, uh, about all of those sort of issues. And then pay, uh, paragraph A20. Now this really did make me laugh. The wider area's existing strengths and potential mean that there is an opportunity to improve Bedford's economic strength by reversing that commuter flow and attracting investment in new high value knowledge intensive industries to the borough. Well, if anybody wants to get on the A6 first thing in the morning um, and then read that, they uh, it, it's just pie in the sky. So, um, you know, they, they're, they're wanting their cake and, and eating it. So anything like this, my price for that would be at least uh, a west, uh, Western bypass to Rushton. And I would also be arguing if this was to come through because Rushton will have to carry all of the services, the infrastructure, the doctors and heaven knows what. I would look at, be looking for a boundary change and um, all section 106 contributions coming into Russia. Okay. Yes, well, ind indeed. I mean, I, these documents do sometimes attract a little hyperbole, but I do take your point on the uh, A20 paragraph. Yes. Um, okay, we have Councillor Boto, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I think you made most of my comments on the railways, which uh, I think is the one of the most positive points regarding Bedford's proposals i.e. the uh, much more uh, sensible rail, rail pricing. Uh, but uh, other than that, um, you said what I wanted to say anyway. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Um, in, in, in the absence of Councillor Andy Mercer, I have to stand in as the um, as the council's authorised train spotter. So, you know, we, we normally have to have a little discussion about signalling or something when we're at the JPC. It's all good fun. Anyway, um, before we divert into that, um, signal chairman, if you continue like that, say again. Oh, he's, luckily he's muted he's himself. <laughs> ah, right, Councillor Lewis, please bring some sanity back. Uh, well, I wouldn't really say that, Mr. Chairman. I was wondering precisely what to say on this, but I think Councillor Jenny has just about summed it up very nicely and expanded it. Uh, a little bit further, helped by Councillor Mercer. So uh, I fully endorse what those two speakers have said, that this is such a massive development. It has major ramifications for Russia. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's got to be a massive trade off with it, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Agree with your sentiments entirely. Um, Councillor Maxwell, please. Yes, um, having worked in Bedford myself personally, I agree about the A6. However, the Paula Radcliffe Way, which uh, is dual carriageway, uh, I would imagine that uh, Bedford are thinking, oh, well, we can carry on with this uh, Paula Radcliffe Way uh, all the way to Rushton. Uh, and then we will then uh, embark on a, a development which will be to their favour, not to our favour. And I just feel that Bedford really haven't thought it out and as for the railway station this did come up some years ago about having a, a stop off at Sharnbrook you know clearly uh, whilst it is inconvenient having to go all the way down to Bedford to get the train uh, they haven't really got the parking to actually fit everybody in so 
that's that is another another issue. So I feel that Bedford uh, seriously need to reconsider and consult rather than dictate. Thank you. Well, to be fair to Bedford, they are they did consult and we have um, sort of responded reasonably, reasonably um, strongly. But they did actually do a consultation as they have to do. There's this thing called the duty to cooperate and they do have to um, consult with neighbouring authorities. OK, um, is there anyone else who would like to speak to this? Ch Chairman, just on that last point, yeah. under the government's new white paper, they want to get rid of the um, duty to cooperate. So we need to get our comments in quickly um, while they're still listening. <laughs> What do you mean while well, they're still listening? Yes, OK, yeah. thank, thank and you. And a chance that they might listen. Yeah, I, I get I get your drift. I'm not. Yes. Mm. Anyway, um, OK, is there anybody else who'd like to speak to this? OK, right. Well, at recommendation 14.1, the committee is recommended to one, endorse the officer draft response to the Bedford Borough Local Plan Issues and Options Consultation at Appendix 3 and two, to identify any amendments or additions to the Council's draft response to the Bedford Borough Local Plan Issues and Options Consultation at Appendix 3 to allow for the Council's consultation response to be formally confirmed. And I think we've had a couple of um, minor um, um, points raised during this debate. Um, so, oh, Councillor, uh, sorry, Mr. Mr. Burton. Oh, thank you, Mr Chair. Just saying, really, I've obviously been taking notes yeah. of the points that members have made, so I'm I'm happy. I mean, I think it may be easier, probably, rather than try and sort of resubmit all the comments, it's probably easier just to condense them into a sort of email slash written statement, which I can then, obviously, we, with your, your authorisation, could then send to our, our colleagues in Bedford, I think, is, is that uh, yeah. sort of these as we're dealing with this makes sense yes thanks okay thank you thank you thank you mr burton um and well done again um so may i have a proposer for the recommendation please proposed chairman thank you Second, and a seconder thank, thank you all those in favor aye. 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 aye are there any against and are there any abstentions Okay, the recommendation is carried. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us with reasonable efficiency um, to the end of tonight's agenda. Um, so, first of all, um, and I think it's been a theme of tonight's meeting, first of all, I'd like to thank the officers for all their hard work in all of the agenda items tonight. It's yeah. one and all. Uh, I'd like to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, members of the committee. It's it's a, it is a complicated committee. It's not easy stuff, this. And so, thank you as always for your patience and for your uh, for your mastery of the, of the complex subjects we've been discussing. So, you know, it's really appreciated. It's not an easy committee to sit on. And so, without further ado, um, the next meeting will be a special meeting on the 19th of October to discuss the latest government bombshell, which will be the government's white paper. But um, anyway, enough of that. We'll have some fun on the 19th of October, I'm sure. And then, as I say, we will meet again in December. And that basically has to sign off the draft of the part two district wide local plan at last. So it will be an extremely important meeting. So that's that's us done. Um, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and I declare the meeting closed. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. OK, um, we're Chairman. off live feed. Bye bye. Bye, bye guys. Bye. 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 Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> it's still live, so um, just be yeah. aware. Oh, so we'll have to wait till we go off. Yes, correct. Ben, do you want me to press end or are you going to? Go on, Charlie, hit the button. <laughs> There we go, I've taken the plunge.